Okay, this session I wanted to talk really about early recognition of signs of laminitis. I say that because probably, or very, very commonly, I go out onto, onto calls, I go out and get asked to see a horse, presenting lame, and they, they, the owner will often tell me, oh, it's a little bit stiff, he has arthritis. It's been damp weather, it's been this, it's been that, it's been the other, and the horse is always a little bit of stiffness with his arthritis. Walk him out, guess what? Not arthritis, very unlikely, uh, very uncommon to see arthritis actually relative to laminitis. I went to see a horse yesterday, 17 hands. We treated it a year ago with intraarticular injections into the joint for a very obvious ring bone, x-ray changes, arthritis around the paston joint, actually in both front feet. And the owner called me and they said, it's been brilliant for a year, really good, but he's gone a bit stiff again. Can you come and give him another injection into the joint? So I went out there with all my stuff to treat his joint for this arthritic condition, checked the x-rays from last year, thought, well, we'll see how it goes. I'll probably just inject it there and then. Got out there, checked it up, trotted it out. The horse couldn't walk, crippled with laminitis. And the owner had mixed that up inadvertently with arthritis, uh, watched it developing over the last few weeks and the horse had put on masses of weight and tipped the balance and has metabolic syndrome, I suspect. We've not tested it for it, but laminitis is very, very common. So what I want you to go away from this short session in thinking is if ever you've got a horse at home that you think it's a bit stiff, it's always a bit stiff, it's always had a bit of arthritis, because if I had a pound for every time somebody had said that to me, I'd be doing okay. I want you to eliminate in your First of all, does this horse have laminitis? Is that the problem it's got? Because in my experience, it's probably far more common than the arthritic horse. Spotting, you've probably, have, has everybody seen acute laminitis? Has anybody not done? I hope you, I'd love somebody to put that. You've never seen acute laminitis, that's brilliant. I'm chuffed a bit, so the more people that have never seen laminitis, the better. Acute laminitis, those symptoms are probably very easy to spot. I think most people would recognize them. The horse is rocking back, it really doesn't want to put weight on its front feet, usually, more, most commonly two front feet, occasionally all four feet, and even more rarely just the back feet. Interestingly, when you get laminitis in just back feet, I found that very bad news. Horse in a lot of pain, and quite, diffi quite difficult to recover, really quite difficult to, to, uh, to get a horse to respond when they just get it in the back feet. All four feet, very very serious, two front feet very serious of course as well. But what I want to do is, the obvious case you, you will see, you will recognise it, I want to try and introduce you today to the more subtle signs. Because as we heard this morning in the lectures, very rarely do we see the acute onset laminitis. More commonly, it's the insidious onset, the slower onset. And my experience again, the longer it takes you to recognise that a horse has got that condition, and the longer it takes you before you start treating that condition, then really the outlook, the prognosis is poorer. The sooner you get on top of the first ever case that happens, the better chance you'll have a, a success in, in treatment and the less likely you'll have that, it, that the condition recurs. We have lots of horses, sadly, with laminitis that come through this clinic or come through World Horse Welfare here. And on Tuesday, I thought, right, we're going to get some classic cases and I couldn't flip and find one. <laughs> so we've cured them all. That's lovely, I wish. But the, um, we've got a couple of horses here that have had it. And I think you can tell, looking at them by the way they move, that they've got it. They still have it. We're managing it. They'll probably always have it. But there's a few things to look out for when you see them move that I wanted to point out as early indicators when you're looking at a horse walking and moving when you think your horse isn't just right to look at it a little bit more critically to see if you can recognize and eliminate it, laminitis from your inquiries first so first of all we'll bring dandy we're going to walk him out on the hard dandy's 19 years old i suspect his equine metabolic syndrome his whole body wobbles as he walks uh, we'll just walk him up and down here first, please. There is, what I want to get across is there's no one symptom says he's got laminitis or he hasn't got laminitis. When I take x-rays to assess, or when we take x-rays to assess whether they've any pedal bone rotation or sinking, there's no one marker says this is good, this is bad. You build up a range of clinical symptoms. 
the first things you do is the most likely is to get heat and heat and an increased digital pulse, so inflammation in the foot. Now I've seen horses with laminitis and the owner tells me it's not got laminitis, look its feet are cold and they're right, they are cold but the horse has still got laminitis. So there's no one absolute indicator that says it is or it isn't. You build up the range of symptoms. First of all, I'm going to walk the horse and see how it walks and do I think this horse has got foot pain by the way it's moving. Is it walking on hot coals and is acute, really doesn't want to walk, in which case, whoa, stop there, don't go any further. Or you trot him up, do you get that flippery toe sort of look, appearance? Then I'm going to feel the feet. Eat. He's not hot in either foot at the moment, or there's no difference in either foot. But you can feel a bundle of fibres just at the back, by the sesamoid bones. And that bundle is the vein, the artery and the nerve, and they all run very close together. And if you just put your finger and thumb either side on those very lightly, and I can't feel a bounding pulse today, I can just feel his pulse, which is normal. You should be able to feel a pulse there. When I monitor a horse under general anaesthetic, I, I'll often just keep hold of its foot because I'm feeling the pulse at that point. But if you feel a real throb, you know you've got an increased... Um, you see, if I did that, I might think it had gravel. Could be. Could be. A horse with an abscess yeah. will have an increased digital pulse. It's just one symptom to say, has this horse got inflammation? If it's in one foot and not the other, yeah. chances are it's an abscess or a gravel or whatever. It just, just means there is inflammation in this foot. And if there's inflammation in that foot, that foot and that foot as well, you start to think inflammation in four feet, yeah. laminitis. So it's starting to build up a picture. So heat, digital pulse. The other thing to have a good look at, and this will tell you perhaps more if there's a chronic case or not, is you pick the foot up. Come on, come on, Dandy. Sometimes. <laughs> Get up. He's not too bad, but you're looking, has he got a flat sole? Now, all horses should have a concave sole. The hind foot, as you all know, is much deeper concave than the front foot. But all horses should have quite a nice concave sole. Quite a lot of them completely flat. Now, that might be genetic. It might be the horse is a little bit flat-footed. Typical sort of thoroughbred, small foot, flat foot bit foot sore without its shoes on but if it's flat it can mean the pedal bone has sunk you've got changes the whole skeleton is sitting lower in the hoof than it should be doing and you've got a flat sole and in some cases the sole protrudes below the shoe even you know the, so you take the shoe off and you can that horse has probably got had or got chronic laminitis again when it comes to building up a clinical picture of any horse whether it's got laminitis or not Laminitis, this insidious onset, it doesn't just start at one point. It's never straightforward black and white, has it got it or hasn't it? So we're looking for foot pain, we're looking for how the horse walked, we're going to feel for a digital pulse. You mentioned just before, quite rightly, hoof rings on the wall. It will tell you, get an indication of this horse's history over the last six months. Has that horse had bouts of different growth rates and different sort of spurts of growth of the horn from the coronary band downwards? And the other one, if you recall one of the x-rays, or a few of the x-rays that have been up this morning, they talked about depression of the coronary band. Now, in a normal horse, you run your fingers down and you go from one straight onto the, onto the hoof. If you get depression, in other words, you run your finger down and it sinks in and then you have to come back up to a little ridge as you hit the coronary band, you've got a good indication there that you've got sinking, that the skeleton has dropped, that the pedal bone has sunk down. And in very, very bad cases, I mean, if, you, if you've got a horse, you've got a depression all the way around and it's lame. Sorry, but I think that's starting to look very bad news. Um, but in some bad cases, they let go, they sink all the way around. Sometimes you just get rotation at the front and you get a little bit of sinking at the front. So that's an indication as well, is that, is there a depression there? Do you hit the top of the, of the coronary band? And he's not... Perfect. I'm going up a little bit. There is a little bit of a depression. So probably on x-ray, probably we could measure a little bit of depression of that sinking uh, of the pedal bone. Ideally, the skeleton, and again, it's not an exact science, but the tip of the, the top of the pedal bone should sit about level with the coronary band. Uh, so what, what I wanted to get across today really was pick up the symptoms of laminitis early. If your horse is stiff, 
First of all, think laminitis. Eliminate that from your inquiries before arthritis, before anything else, because the sooner you treat a laminitis, the more likely it will respond to treatment. And I had a, I had a case that's ongoing at the moment that had been hacked out in the morning. At two o'clock when it had its lunch, it was fine. And at four o'clock in the afternoon, it was rocking back on, the on, it, on its feet. Acute onset laminitis, because the horse, there was another thing that caused it. The horse was quite ill. But what we did, we had foot supports underneath its feet that afternoon or within a couple of hours of it starting and at one of the other stations, I don't know if you've been there yet, but we happened to use the styrofoam pads, we put these foot supports underneath it, taped them onto its feet, sedated it, which incidentally, we did that to try and improve the circulation. It's a vasodilator, a blood vessel dilator, so you're improving the circulation to the feet. One of the consequences of sedation, of using ACP to dilate the blood vessels is sedation. So it was led down all the time, which was great. I wanted the weight off its feet. I didn't want that horse's skeleton pushing it, forcing it down through the soles. And I talked to Derek Nottenbelt last week and he said some, so he was telling me some obscure American he heard of how he used to get horses with acute laminitis. He wanted to get the weight off the feet. How do you make a horse lie down? He said he brought the roof down to about, to about three foot high and the horse has to lie down because it bangs its head otherwise it can't stand up. And that was his way of treating acute laminitis cases. So we, we'd supported that horse's feet within hours, we got the medication into it within hours and actually from what I thought was going to be an absolute catastrophe that particular horse is doing very well at the moment. So it's about early recognition of signs, early, early treatment, certainly if it's the first ever case reduces the chances of it, of it, of it <coughs> recurring. Once a horse has had laminitis of course and we heard it this morning you're managing it for life, you're trying to prevent it for life and it's increasing the awareness and the, this condition of uh, fat scoring and, and mon monitoring whether they've got metabolic syn syndrome or not. All that sort of wider management and monitoring will, will, will help manage the horse.